This is going to be the first video in a shortened series of videos about getting actors to communicate with each other, actor communication. So part one we're going to look at direct referencing by building a door with a button that controls it. So it's just going to be a very simple door. When you walk into an area which I'm going to call the button, the door itself will disappear. But in order to get this to work, we're going to build a separate actor for the door, a separate actor for the button, and have them both interact with each other. That's how we're going to set up the actor communication. So first of all, I'm going to create a door. In my Blueprints folder, I'm going to create a new Blueprint. This is going to be an actor that I'm going to call BP underscore door. In BP door, I'm going to add a new component. This is going to be a static mesh. And the static mesh, I'm going to set to just a cube. I'm going to just change the dimensions of this cube to make it a bit more dory. There we go. Kind of a nice wide flat door and set a slightly more interesting material. Uh, basic shape material. There you go. How boring could you get? Okay, so the door is now created. If I drag one of them into the world, you can see that is indeed quite a large obstacle. So let's create the second part of this, which is going to be the uh, button which controls the door. Another blueprint. This is another actor. BP underscore button. And inside the button, I'm just going to dock that at the top, so I've got all three of my blueprints open. The button is going to need a static mesh. And again, I'm going to call this the button mesh. I'm going to set that to another cube. And this time I'm just going to flatten that one down to make it a nice small platform. And why not make it a bit bigger as well. But in order to detect that the player has moved onto this button, I'm also going to add a box collision component. The box collider is currently really tiny, so I'm just going to increase the extent of that until it matches the floor plate that it's sat on. It doesn't matter if it goes underneath a little bit, but I'm going to just lift it up so it's just on, sat on top of the plate. Just as we've done before, I can use this box collider to drive collision events, detecting when the player touches this. Let's just set a different... Uh, where's my gold material that we made earlier? There we go. A golden button. When you step on it, we're going to open the door. So in the event graph now, the box collider will be used to detect the player. We've done this repeatedly at this point. If other actor is equal to... Get player pawn. Oh, wrong one. Then we're going to do a thing. So to test that this works, I can put a print string in. Do a thing. Excellent. And put my button into the game world. If I walk on top of it, it should say do a thing at the top. Do a thing. Excellent. And I can't walk through the door, so it is a suitable obstacle. But the door and the button are two separate actors, two different blueprints. They currently cannot communicate with each other. What I'm going to do in the button is to create a new variable. I'm going to call this door ref. And when the, in the type here, we're used to setting floats, integers and bools, regular programming variables when we're setting up our blueprints here, but you can actually set up variables of other actors or other blueprints. So in this case, I can set up a variable as a reference to BP door as an object reference. This means it will point to an existing reference of the door somewhere in the world. So if I select the door reference, it is currently, I need to compile the blueprint before I can set it. The currently door reference there is set to none. If I expose this variable by making it instance editable, make sure that eyeball is visible, and we come into the level itself in the editor window and select the button, you can see under default here there is a door reference variable. And I can actually 
it will automatically filter out all of the objects in the game world and they should appear in this drop down list here so I can see there is one VP door in this level but what if we had five or six or seven of these all set up what if I built an, a, an entire wall out of these doors and we only want one of them to open well then you can use this little pipette selector to choose an actor from your scene if you click on that the next actor that you pick on if it's of the correct type will be set as a reference in the panel there so this button is now connected to this door so instead of saying do a thing why don't I simply get a reference to the door and destroy it if I step on the platform that section of wall should disappear that's a direct reference we've had to hard code it by in the editor choosing exactly which door this controls but these two blueprints are independent and would otherwise have no way of interacting with each other but by exposing that variable that we created and then setting it in the editor we can control exactly which component interacts with another one this is a very useful system for building say one controller that can interact with multiple things and then reusing them throughout your level because if I duplicate this button over here and instead of using the same door I could have this one instead delete the wall in front of it so they can all interact with different components reusable reproducible effects across multiple levels using the same piece of code this is direct referencing